Hi, everybody. My name is Maida Devare. I am a senior research fellow at the International Food Policy Research Institute. I also lead the organized module of uh, CGIR's platform for big data and agriculture. Um, and I coordinate uh, the Information and Data Management, or IDM, COP, Community of Practice, along with my uh, colleagues, five of my colleagues who lead the working groups. And we're here to tell you a little bit about our COP and hopefully give you a reason to join us. So first of all, who is the, the IDM COP? Uh, the IDM COP consists of information specialists and data managers uh, from across the CGIR centers. We're organized into about uh, an 80 person strong community of practice, very vibrant, uh, very active. Um, and the primary sort of overall goals are to make CGIR's very rich data assets open and more fair or findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And you'll see that I've added an E to the fair in the, in the little graphic there, uh, because increasingly we're also talking about handling data in ethical ways. And so there's an E component to that as well. Um, the idea here is to help align our, 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 um, what we do with our data, data management, with CGIR's open access and data management policy, as well as current needs, taking into account uh, the, the current landscape, digital landscape. So what are the key roles that, that of, of the, the members of this community of practice? Overall, uh, uh, the, the members help develop and implement common standards, tools, approaches uh, that enable open and fair data assets. And as I said earlier, uh, most of this work is done via five vibrant uh, working groups, and you'll hear more about uh, those working groups from the working group chairs who work with me to coordinate this COP. Um, there's a lot of engagement with external entities already on a variety of fronts, uh, and, and this includes, but is not uh, uh, restricted to, repository platforms, uh, issues regarding data annotation, agri-semantic standards, and there's much more as well. You'll hear a little bit about that going forward. Um, so some of the key roles also include uh, capacity enhancement, for instance, uh, uh, fostering culture change, because we all recognize that the tools and services are kind of the easy part. The culture change is much harder. Um, and so the, the, the members of the COP work pretty hard to, to both enhance capacity and uh, build culture change around data management at centers. Uh, and they help the CGR committee stay, stay current uh, in, in a rapidly changing data and publications landscape. Agriculture is getting increasingly digitized and digital, um, and we're helping our researchers, or we, we'd like to help our researchers uh, stay on top of that. So here I'm just showing you a couple of our, our um, uh, some of our, our key assets that, that help towards this. This is the open access and open data support pack uh, that anybody can, can get into and, and use. Uh, there are many resources there, feel free to check it out. Uh, the link is at the bottom, you can, you can look at that. Uh, but, but further down, if you go further down in this page, you'll also see uh, the webinar series that we run through the COP. Um, you'll see a lot of uh, links to webinars, you can have a look at those. And certainly when you join, or if you join our COP, uh, you will be able to attend many of those webinars, all of those, all that you wish. Uh, the other important thing here is uh, a, a large uh, five module data management course towards fair and open data outcomes. And you can look at, uh, yeah, click on the link there, you can join the course. It's a self-regulating uh, course that you can take yourself. So these are just two examples of, of the, the capacity and culture change kinds of efforts that we've uh, built through, through this uh, information data management COP. Um, and you'll hear more now from my colleagues um, at the working groups, uh, in the working groups, who lead the working groups, starting with uh, the open access working group led by Ryan Miller. Thanks very much and um, over to you, Ryan. Hello, my name is Ryan Miller. I work for IFPRI, the International Food Policy Research Institute in knowledge management where I work as a senior digital information specialist. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit today about the open access working group within the IDM community of practice. Our group serves as a forum for the discussion of scholarly publishing broadly and the changes related to the open access movement. We have these three main areas of focus work listed on this slide where we're uh, developing educational promotional material on open access, helping members advocate for stable funding and supporting uh, reporting on the impact of open access within the CJR. One aspect 
of open access that we share with the rest of the scholarly publishing community is the double squeeze on budgets from rising subscription fees and the increased article processing fees. So part of our work is to help each other understand and articulate the value of open access publishing and the need to continue funding it with in our centers. Another function is to support the reporting on the impact of open access within the CG. Uh, we do that uh, by collaborating on a network of repositories and tools coordinated with our system office. In 2020, um, despite the challenges of, of this pandemic that we've all become so familiar with, uh, we had a couple of achievements I'd like to point out. Uh, we were successful in preparing educational material for our members that we can then use within our centers. For example, we prepared a document on predatory publishing, how to spot it and how to avoid it. It drew on the collective experience of our participants. Uh, members can then take a portion of that document or the whole and use it as a handout. They can put it on a website or any other form. We also worked on some other guides to developments in publishing in general, uh, picking Creative Commons licenses within the CG, uh, as so we have a standard and a sort of an approved license that we've developed within the CG and across centers, and reporting on ISI journal status. In keeping with our function of supporting continued funding for the open access within our centers, we began an examination of citation rates for journal access, uh, for journal articles for our centers. And this is an example of um, some of the work we've done on citation comparison uh, done using the web of science. Uh, the blue bars indicate the average citation rates for open access articles as compared to restricted and overall. We found citation rates higher for open access articles and this follows other research on article citation rates that have similar findings across other disciplines. Uh, we plan to expand this work in the coming year and I'll have another slide on that. One of the other things we plan to do um, in the coming year as a, as, as a future plan, um, a little bit different than the, the past year would be to engage with open access communities or um, institutions that have similar interests um, beyond the CG with a mind towards learning how they are facing the challenges uh, that, are, that scholarly publishing is encountering. We'll also hope to look at potential, maybe for knowledge sharing with other, other organizations in the countries where we work. So in the coming year, in addition to the regular meetings uh, that we have virtually, we are working on documenting a case study on the experience of the CGR with open access. Uh, this is going to build on the work that we did comparing citation rates between open access and restricted articles. And we hope to do this with some interviews with our researchers and try to capture how open access is used and what is most valuable for it, for our research staff and for the audiences we serve. From this, we hope to have something that we could potentially publish as an article or perhaps a white paper. Um, we also plan to continue preparing educational materials for our members, depending on the concerns they raise. And lastly, the, uh, the existing CGR policy on open access and open data was written in 2013, but is due for a revision, and we will assist with that as needed. Thank you very much. And now I will hand off to my colleague Neelam Prasai, who co-leads the repository working group. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. I am Neelam Prasai, Senior Data Curator at International Food Policy Research Institute. My colleague, Leroy Mwanja, Chief Data Officer at Alliance of Biodiversity International and SEAT. Leroy and I lead repository working group within IDM COP. CGIR and its center endorse open access and open data policies. Repositories play a crucial role in supporting and implementing CGIR commitment to open access and open data. The repository landscape within CGIR is diverse, as is elsewhere. The centers primarily have publication and data repositories. The backend so software used in developing these repositories are also different, including DSpace to CCAN and from self-installed Dataverse to Harvard installed Dataverse. We needed to improve interoperability across different repositories and their content. We need to make our digital assets more findable, accessible, and discoverable. Repository managers, information specialists, data specialists, and others needed a forum, a place to discuss issues, actionable ideas, and solutions to achieve our goal of interoperable repositories with fair contents. 
Therefore, this working group was created to discuss, advise, and recommend actionable ideas and share expertise and insights for managing and maintaining repositories across centers. As of now, this group is comprised of about 35 members. The group also serves as a liaison or a voice to reach out to, de to repository developers for fixing uh, common issues and building needed features. So what we have achieved through this working group so far? To strengthen capacity and to keep ourselves updated with latest trend and issues, we organized presentations from experts. This year, we focused on conf confidential and sensitive data management and repository certification. We invited Dan's team to share about their data tax recommendation tool. We invited Jonathan Crabtree from University of North Carolina to share about their infrastructure for privacy assured computation project. We also invited core tr trust sale team to learn about their repository certification process. We coordinated with repository developers to improve some functionalities as discussed in our working group. We worked with, our, with the Dataverse developers to bring back bulk download feature in user interface. We identified current gaps and actions needed to, Im to implement CG Core metadata schema. We also developed an inventory of data repositories that are used across centers. And we regularly hold our virtual monthly meetings to discuss issues and share insights. So in future, we plan to continue to serve as a forum for discussing emerging issues, trends, and ideas through regular virtual meetings. We'll continue to enhance our capacity strengthening activities through organizing presentations by experts within and beyond CGIR in the field of data and repository management. We plan to coordinate with repository developers to implement additional file level metadata for data sets. We also plan to co collaborate across working groups such as metadata working group, ontology working group, and with others as needed to standardize terms for describing data. And we will work on defining and improving the reporting of data metrics. If you are looking for opportunities to collaborate or thinking about what's in it for me, then we can work together to improve open source repository functionalities for broader applications. We can learn together from each other on issues, trends, and ideas emerging in data management and repository management. For example, data metrics, incentivization of researchers, et cetera, et cetera. You can present and participate in our web webinar series. Please feel free to reach out to us at repository workinggroup at groups.cgir.org if you are looking forward to be a member of this working group. Thank you. With this, I would like to invite Leroy Muanja to present on Globus Working Group. Good morning or good evening, depending to where you're listening to me today. My name is Leroy Monzia. I'm the Chief Data Officer at the Alliance of Biodiversity International and CIA. I would like to share with you briefly about the Globus Working Group within the Information and Data Management Community of Practice. Globus is a non-profit service developed and operated by the University of Chicago. The Globus service allows users to unify access to data management system. It allows you to efficiently, securely, and reliably transfer data between data systems. It doesn't matter if these systems are separated by an office or an ocean. Globus does this via software as a service and using your existing identities. Globus was built by researchers for researchers. Therefore, Globus also provides a, plat a platform as a service that allows us to build our own web applications, science gateways, and portals using Globus. It does this by providing reusable APIs, such as the auth API, and a Python software development kit. The Globus Working Group is a very new working group that seeks to bring together data management and IT professionals to use Globus within agricultural research. So what are our key achievements this year? As I said earlier, we are a new working group and have just begun. So far, we've been able to organize two well-attended webinars to CGR staff. 
We use these webinars to introduce Globus to our colleagues and highlight the potential uses of Globus in international agricultural research. We also demonstrated how CG Labs, a collaborative analytics environment created by the CGR Guardian team, is using Globus. So what is the need for our future? We have exciting plans for the future. We hope that Globus will serve as a discussion forum and technical work, working group for secure data management and transfer. We also want to work with the socioeconomic data community of practice to explore the use of a more secure version of Globus for secure management of sensitive information, such as personally identifiable information. We would also like to work with the repository, ontology, metadata, working groups uh, of the information and data management community of practice and the guardian teams to improve data availability within CG labs and other platforms that work on agricultural research. This working group is open to everyone interested in data management, especially within agricultural research. Whether you are in the CGR or you are an individual or you work for a partner organization. Join us to learn and share experiences on how to use Globus to share data and build research applications using the Globus platform. You can contact us at globus-wg at groups.cgr.org. Thank you for listening to me, and I now hand you over to my colleague and friend, Abenet, who leads the Metadata Working Group. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Abendetia Borg and I work as a Knowledge Curation Manager at the International Livestock Research Institute. I'll be talking about the Metadata Working Group of the Information in Data Management Community of Practice. So I will also present on behalf of my colleague Marie Angelique Lapour, who is also uh, the leader of the Metadata Working Group. Just to say where we started, it was around 2010 and 11 when many CGR centers started using web-based open source institutional repositories such as DSpace, CCAN, and Dataverse. With increased use of the institutional repositories came the need or commitment to improve accessibility and findability of uh, CGR research outputs. Of course, the open institutional repositories that I just mentioned above use standard metadata schema of their own, but that was not enough to create meaningful interoperability among CGR platforms and systems. And also there was an increasing interest to improve reporting and impact assessment. And thus the CGR metadata working group was set up to work on and define a CGR specific core set of elements and to also uh, work on common standards that uh, remove unnecessary variations. Let me now try to highlight the key achievements by this group. So this group has been working a lot with data and information managers from across the CGR and platforms. We conducted various surveys to understand the existing elements and their usages uh, and so on. So uh, one of uh, the biggest and the most important achievements so far by this group is the development and release of the CG Core Metadata Schema. So this is mainly based on the Dublin Core Metadata Schema as we do not want to uh, deviate from well working uh, international standards, but it also has CGR specific core set of elements. It also gives clear guideline on how elements can be used and recommends use and reuse of existing vocabularies, ontologies, and control terms. So at the link provided at the bottom of the slide, you can uh, access the CG for metadata reference guide. A related, although indirect attainment, uh, is the possibility implementation of the CG for metadata schema brings to innovation such as Guardian in the CG Space Explorer. So implementation greatly improves visualization and aggreg uh, aggregation of all research outputs across the CGR in one place. It has also, uh, interoperability has also helped uh, cut duplication of thousands of contents across uh, the CGR. And it has also uh, made it easy for CGR metadata and data to be findable not only by humans, but also by 
uh, computers and uh, machines. It has uh, also improved our FAIR uh, compliance uh, because implementation of the CG Core metadata uh, schema helps us meet the requirements of the FAIR guiding principles. Let me now briefly talk about our uh, plans for the future. So one of our plans is to work on extension of the CG Core metadata uh, schema. Uh, for example, we plan to work on extension of uh, certain information product types. Uh, the second one is building capacities in sharing experience on the implementation of uh, the schema. Uh, so uh, this is uh, to, uh, to, add, uh, to address issues such as, um, uh, for instance, these space repositories only allow implementation of uh, flat, flat metadata schema, so we try to address uh, such issues with uh, the work that we do here. And uh, the third one is we plan to work with other uh, CGR teams to support publishing of uh, control lists and taxonomies that the CG Core metadata schema can additionally uh, recommend for uh, CGR and agricultural research in general. Uh, finally, I'd like to mention that the CG Core metadata schema is shared with an open license uh, for anyone uh, interested, especially the agricultural community, to adapt, build upon, and use. And we would be very glad to hear from interested people, and we're open to collaboration beyond the CGR uh, for broader application in the agricultural domain. So interested people can contact us at the email provided on this slide. Uh, so that's all I wanted to say. Thanks for paying attention. With this, I would like to introduce the next uh, speaker, Elizabeth Ar Arnold, to uh, talk about the Ontologies uh, Working Group. Hello, I am uh, Elizabeth Arnaud, uh, co-lead of the Digital Solution Teams uh, at the Alliance of Biodiversity, SIAT. Uh, and I will present today the ontology working group that I'm co-chairing with Suno Kim, Senior Data Management at IFPRI. So the context for creating the ontology working group was, of course, the de development of the CGIR open data strategy. Uh, there was a need to support the real interoperability of the data sets and also enable connections of data sets and publications upon a keyword search. And so data managers needed to label the multidisciplinary data with uh, both uh, human and machine readable, readable labels. So we also wanted to help data managers to find the proper terms in a large ecosystem of ontologies and thesauri. So this was the objective of the ontology working group and of course, it will support the eye of the FAIR data, which is the interoperability. So among the key achievements we, we did is that uh, nowadays, if you, if you search uh, a repository uh, data sets in the CGIA repository, you will uh, see that keywords are uh, compiling terms from uh, main thesauri, but also from uh, main ontologies with their URIs. And it means that uh, the terms can be resolved by computers as well. Um, then the group uh, in, faced some difficulties to select uh, ontologies that are relevant to, the, to agriculture. So we discussed with ontology experts and the group came with a list of quality criteria that are important to check before selecting an ontology for data labeling. Uh, the list of, the quali of those criteria was recently published in a paper in the patent journals and the link is on, on the right side of this slide. Then we invited um, the team managing the standard for FAO and particularly curating Agrovoc to um, give a webinar on Agrovoc and uh, curation tools and the editorial board. And then we decided to, to collaborate for making sure that the CGIR terms uh, missing from Agrovoc will be submitted and integrated. 
um, Agrovoc is the, one of the largest uh, thesaurus in agriculture and it's largely used in repositories. Then uh, we decided to, to test also the mapping of uh, our agronomy ontology to Agrovoc in the perspective of expanding the user experience for data labeling, not just limiting the access to thesaury, but also opening access to ontologies. And this uh, ontology working group is acting as a core group uh, for the ontology community of practice of the big data platform. So among the key achievements, I wanted to highlight the creation of working groups. Um, so there, the first one is the crop phenotyping working group, where we do contribute to the development and the addition of missing terms for the crop threat ontology and the plant stress ontologies. Uh, the agronomy ontology is also an important output uh, that encompasses field management practices. And we have the new and still in development socioeconomic ontology laid by Suno Kim, and that was recently tested with RICE survey data. We also try to enable or to help data manager using the ontologies. So we are producing some guidelines and uh, we are revising actually the uh, guidelines for the crop ontology. So the future um, work uh, will be to, to develop the small fisheries and aquaculture ontology with uh, our partner institution, Wallfish. Uh, this is very much starting the, this month and we plan to collaborate with uh, other groups or consortia uh, working on uh, fisheries data like ATSAF uh, in FAO. We also have uh, in our plans to start a livestock ontology with the livestock community of practice of the big data platform in collaboration with ILRI based in Ethiopia and also with the Edinburgh University. And also, uh, uh, with IMI, we would like uh, to develop a, a water management ontology, which is not yet started, but uh, is of high interest to some of our collaborators. And uh, we were approached by colleagues working with drones, satellite imagery, to also create a working group for remote sensing data. So uh, we welcome, of course, any expertise or any um, uh, in collaborators for collaborating to the development of those ontology by sharing their control vocabularies or uh, proposing data sets against which we could test our uh, draft ontologies. Then uh, we also welcome uh, uh, partners to send us data set to test uh, the socioeconomic ontology, mainly with household surveys and uh, the fisheries and aquaculture ontology. Uh, then we will continue submitting keywords missing in Agrovoc, and then we are currently discussing with FAO the best uh, data flow for doing that. Uh, and we will submit also concept to the reference ontologies that we are using for our data labeling. So this, uh, those working groups are really open to collaborators and partners. So if you wish to to contact us and see if you can integrate one of the working group, please uh, contact um, us through, um, I didn't put the, the email, but you can find our ontology community of practice webpage on the big data platform, and you can specify that you would like to join a specific um, work, working group. So thank you for your attention. And I'm giving back the floor to Meda for some concluding words. Hi, everybody. So I'm back and I hope you enjoyed what you heard from our five uh, working group chairs. There's a lot going on, uh, as I'm sure you've come away with. Uh, and you're welcome to join us and work collaborat collaboratively with us on a number of different issues from you know, the development and implementation of standards, culture change at your institution, how you handle it, how you incentivize researchers, um, all sorts of things moving 
towards open and fair and ethical um, uh, data assets. So please do join us. Uh, you can find out more about our COP. There's a, there's a, a link for you there that you can look at. Uh, at the on the big data platforms uh, webpage, you can also join our LinkedIn group. Just stay in touch. I've provided the link there. And as you um, have, uh, as you think through what you heard here, you can post your questions in the chat, and you can also um, add issues and sort of thought provo provoking ideas. Um, anything you'd like to add in the discussion board that will accompany uh, this this presentation. So we look forward to hearing from you. We look forward to engaging with you. Please do join us. Thank you.